Hey there folks and welcome back. In this video, we're going to put our knowledge of gradients and directional derivatives to use to solve the following problem. In this problem, we're given the function fxy equals x e to the minus y minus x sine y. In part a, we'd like to determine the gradient of the function at the point 2, 0. In part b, we're looking for the directional derivative of f at 2, 0 and moving in the direction of minus 1, 2. Finally, in part c, we're looking for the direction in which we should move from the point 2, 0 to maximize our directional derivative. We'd also like to know the maximum value of the directional derivative here. Okay, so in part a, we're looking for the gradient of our function at the point 2, 0. The gradient is the vector of partial derivatives, so we should start by finding fx and fy. Here's our function once again. The partial derivative with respect to x, fx at xy, is given by e to the minus y minus sine y. The partial derivative with respect to y at xy is given by, well, the derivative of this guy, that's minus x e to the minus y. And now I take the derivative of this term, that gives me minus x cos y. Okay, we have our partial derivatives. To get our gradient, we plop them into a vector. Our gradient vector is del f at xy, and its entries are e to the minus y minus sine y, and minus x e to the minus y minus x cos y. All right, fantastic. We can wrap up this part of the problem by plugging in 2, 0 for x and y. We find that the gradient of f at 2, 0 is e to the minus 0 minus sine 0. That's our first entry. And in our second entry, we have minus 2 e to the minus 0 minus 2 cos 0. We can simplify this by noting that e to the 0 is 1 and sine of 0 is 0. So my first entry is 1. And for the second entry, I have minus 2 times 1 minus 2 times 1. That's minus 4. In part b, we're looking for the directional derivative of our function at 2, 0 and moving in the direction of minus 1, 2. Now, I guess we could write down the old formula. duf at ab is the partial derivative with respect to x times u1 plus the partial derivative with respect to y times u2. Ah, but that's too much work. Let's write down our nice new compact formula in terms of the gradient vector. Our directional derivative at 2, 0 and moving in the direction of a vector u is equal to the dot product of the gradient vector del f at 2, 0 with the vector u. From part a, we already know the gradient at 2, 0. It's the vector 1 minus 4. So all that remains here is to find the vector u. Now, of course, it's not going to be this guy. We have to divide by the norm. We have to unitize it. So our u vector is going to be 1 over the norm of the vector minus 1, 2 times the vector minus 1, 2. That's 1 over the square root of minus 1 squared plus 2 squared times minus 1, 2. That's 1 over root 5 times minus 1, 2. My u vector is minus 1 over root 5 2 over root 5. All right, folks, let's put it all together. My gradient is the vector 1 minus 4. My u vector is the vector minus 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5. The dot product is therefore 1 times minus 1 over root 5. That's minus 1 over root 5 minus 4 times 2 over root 5. That's minus 8 over root 5. I have a total of minus 9 over root 5. Okay, last part of the problem. At the point 2, 0, in which direction should we move to maximize our directional derivative? Also, what is this maximum value? Well, if you'll recall from our last video, the directional derivative is maximized when we move in the direction of the gradient. So let's write this down. The directional derivative, duf at 2, 0, is going to be largest when u points in the same direction of the gradient vector del f at 2, 0. Of course, we know what del f at 2, 0 is. We found it back in part a. It's the vector 1 minus 4. So we want our vector u to be pointing in the direction of 1 minus 4. Now notice that here, we're just asking for the direction in which we should move. We didn't say that we necessarily want a unit vector. 
So leaving your answer as 1 minus 4 is okay, even though this is not a unit vector. If you actually were going about finding this directional derivative, yeah, you would have to unitize the vector. But if we're just looking for a direction, don't worry about the length. The last part of this problem asks for the maximum value of the directional derivative. Well, I guess you could go about computing the directional derivative, doing exactly what I just said, unitizing this vector and taking the dot product with the gradient. But what's the point? We already know what the maximum value is going to be. From our last video, we know that the maximum value of the directional derivative is the norm of the gradient. So the maximum value of duf at 2, 0 is going to be the norm of del f at 2, 0. That's the norm of the vector 1 minus 4, which is the square root of 1 squared plus minus 4 squared root 17. That's the largest possible value of our directional derivative at 2, 0. I always like to look at the graph of my function at the end of these problems to appreciate that the math really does work out. So here's the graph of f of x, y. I've labeled the point 2, 0, and I've included some of the quantities we found along the way. The directional derivative at 2, 0, and in the direction of minus 1, 2, is minus 9 over root 5. That's telling me that if I start at 2, 0 and move in the direction of this vector, I should see a negative rate of change. Sure enough, that's exactly what happens. Starting at this point and moving in this direction, you can see that the z value is going to decrease. I've also included our gradient at 2, 0, the vector 1 minus 4. This vector is supposed to tell me the direction of steepest ascent, and sure enough, it does. If I start at 2, 0 and move in the direction of 1 minus 4, my gradient is taking me right up the side of this ridge. We're increasing as quickly as possible. So the math works, and you can see it in the graph. 